This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It is your Wednesday and some pretty good days are on the horizon. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. It is February 17th. And our time right now is 630. The snow and the rain are mostly gone. The weather is still causing some problems out there this morning, though. We're live at a very foggy Bluegrass Airport. How police say they were able to bust a man who tried to hire someone to commit murder. And a Kentucky meteorologist is in hot water this morning because of what police say they found in her home. Yeah, we are looking at some more flakes. Far northern Kentucky, you got to get into places like Flemingsburg and then roll your way toward Vanceburg. Here comes some more snow headed your way. It's coming out of Mason County. It's not much, but it is enough maybe to cause a little bit of a headache. Speaking of a headache, we're looking at patchy fog out about very dense. I'll show you some really nice temperatures in your forecast. That's the better thing in your forecast that's coming up. All right, Micah. And so, as you very well know, for more than a week, we've been talking about snow and cold weather around here. But this morning, drivers might run into some different travel troubles. Yeah, there's thick fog in many areas, including near Lexington's Bluegrass Airport. That's where we find Michelle Chamberlain live this morning with an update on the travel forecast. Good morning. Yeah, a plane just flew overhead here at the Bluegrass Airport, and its lights disappeared because of the fog. And the visibility is low out there this morning, so just be careful in your morning commute. You know, we dealt with nine days of snow, and now this morning we're dealing with fog. And at the Bluegrass Airport, there are three flights delayed so far this morning. But for those of you traveling on the road, do know that you need to be careful as you head out this morning, as visibility is at a half mile or less in certain parts of central Kentucky. So be careful. This patchy fog is causing visibility issues, like I said, in many areas. We're getting reports from all around our viewing area of people dealing with fog on their morning commutes. If you take the Clays Ferry Bridge, know that you will be driving through dense fog this morning. Nicholasville, I was told, has heavy fog. One of our producers drives in from Clark County, and she said she drove through heavy fog this morning on her way into the station. So be careful out there this morning and remember to drive with your low beams on if you are driving through fog. And for those of you flying, there are three delays so far here at the Bluegrass Airport, two flights to Atlanta and one to Philadelphia. So if you're flying, be sure to check the status of your flight before you head here to Bluegrass Airport. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Thank you, Michelle. Flooding remains a concern in some communities this morning. In Estill County, a bridge on Red Lick Road is closed because of high water. The Kentucky River is also rising, coming close to some homes in the area. State road crews say it will take a while for the water to go back down. Well, even though the snow has moved out of our area, there are still nearly 60 school closings and delays this morning. As always, you can find a complete list on WKYT.com or by downloading the WKYT News app. Now 6:33 on WKYT and new this morning a Somerset man is in jail accused in a murder for hire plot. Police say Jordan Nicholas found someone to murder another Somerset man. But the sheriff's office says that man that he found was an undercover deputy it turns out. After the two met and discussed the details of the crime that was supposed to happen, police charged Nicholas with solicitation to commit murder. New this morning in Scott County, police are looking for the man who robbed a Domino's in the middle of the night. It happened about 2 this morning on U.S. 25 in Georgetown. Police say a man with a gun stole cash. Three employees were inside at the time and no one was hurt. We're also updating you on a traffic alert in Lexington this morning. Fontaine Road has just reopened between McDowell and Irvin Roads near Chevy Chase. Police say a suspected drunk driver crashed into a utility pole about 1.30 this morning there. They worked on it all night long. The driver wasn't hurt. Kentucky Utilities, though, had the road closed while that power pole was repaired. Again, it has just reopened. Well, crashes kept Kentucky Utilities crews and police busy overnight. Another driver took out a pole on Democrat Boulevard at North Cleveland Road this morning. That driver was also not hurt. His truck was the only thing holding up that utility pole. Crews came in to replace it. The driver is not facing any charges. A Western Kentucky meteorologist is in jail accused of growing marijuana in her home. State police arrested Tori Shaw of WPSD Television in Paducah and her husband, Tyler Smoyer, at their Graves County home. State police say they found five pot plants, guns, silencers, eight boxes of ammunition, a tactical vest, and lots of items used to potentially grow marijuana inside their home. The Frankfurt police chief says an officer has resigned after inappropriate conversations with an inmate. Police say patrol officer Benjamin Sullivan resigned once the department started investigating the conversations they had with an inmate in the Franklin County Regional Jail. The police chief won't go into any more details. 
He says it is a personnel matter. A bill that could drastically change Kentucky's education system is expected to go up for a vote today. And yeah, the changes would affect teachers and testing for students. Debbie County's Mark Barber is live in Frankfort with more on what these changes could mean for schools across our area. Good morning, Rebecca. If Senate Bill 1 is adopted, it would create sweeping changes in our schools from kindergarten through 12th grade. Now, the bill's first real test will come later today when it is called to the floor in the Senate. Now, here's what we've learned about Senate Bill 1 so far. It would do away with some statewide testing, and it would also create a new structure for how academic standards are reviewed. The bill would also allow high school students to get credit for arts and humanities courses if they take certain language or tech classes instead. Under the bill, school districts would also take more control over teacher evaluation and improvements at their schools. For example, if a school is consistently struggling, the district would spearhead efforts to help the school turn around instead of relying on the Department of Education. School districts would also start creating and using their own teacher evaluation systems. There are some concerns about the legislation, though, this morning. The Kentucky Education Association is questioning whether it's premature, saying the state may not have the authority to give school districts this much flexibility. Now, if Senate Bill 1 is approved by the full Senate later today, it will then go before the House of Representatives. Live in Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, we'll see what happens. Thank you, Mark. We could learn more this week about the future of the Center Point project in downtown Lexington. It did not come up at yesterday's council's work session, but the agenda for tomorrow's committee meetings does include discussion about City Hall. A report released last week mentioned Center Point as a viable location for a new City Hall. The very next day, the key investors for the Center Point project pulled out. The Urban County Council's regular meeting will be at 6 tomorrow night after the committee meeting. WKYT Morning News Time is 637. Kentucky's new Medicaid commissioner says the cost to run the insurance program is about to skyrocket. Commissioner Stephen Miller said the cost will jump 20% to more than $3.7 billion over the next two years. He questions if the program can be sustained in the long term. Former Governor Steve Beshear expanded the Medicaid program. Current Governor Matt Bevin has promised to repeal that expansion. U.S. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky is among the Republicans who could potentially block the president's nomination for the Supreme Court. During a town hall meeting in Allen County, Senator Paul said the president can nominate anyone he wants, but he made it clear he likely won't approve that person. From my perspective and from the perspective of representing Kentucky, it's going to be hard for me to approve of an appointment that would go against everything that Kentucky needs. Hours after Justice Antonin Scalia died Saturday, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky said the next justice should not be nominated until there's a new president next year. A team of Lexington firefighters will get to shoot hoops at Rupp Arena in support of a fellow firefighter. Right, Matt Logston was diagnosed with cancer last month and he's undergoing treatment in Chicago. Lexington firefighter Kyle Branham says UK Athletics offered to let a team of firefighters play at Rupp Arena for five minutes right during the halftime of tomorrow night's UK game against Tennessee. Should bring a lot of attention to their special cause. Nike's even making special jerseys for the firefighters. And by the way, Kentucky takes on Tennessee tomorrow night. That game is at 7 o'clock. It will be on ESPN. Should be a good one. Let's get a check of traffic right now and see what's happening. Let's go to Officer Don with a check on live drive traffic. He's out there at 98 won the Bull. Good morning. Good morning. Well, no collisions on the north side. I had a look at Winchester Road inbound US 60. Uh, decent traffic flow this morning. Of course, uh, fog here and there that we have to deal with, but for the most part, roads are in a lot better shape as we get a live look at uh, real time uh, drive times right now. And you can see no major issues coming in from Nicholasville, Versailles Road, even Georgetown. Uh, and our drive times are okay too. Paris Pike looks good this morning. No major problems headed to Madison County and 75 north and southbound uh, from Georgetown in decent shape. Uh, looking at 18 minutes from Paris, 30 minutes from Mount Sterling, and 31 minutes from Richmond. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, uh, Don and Micah. Just telling us that our uh, viewers in northern Kentucky might want to have a heads up uh, right now about the situation there around Maysville. Quick coating of snow as possible. Uh, a little bit of a snow shower moving through there right now. So especially along the AA Highway, heads up. You can get the latest traffic, weather info anytime with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. A lot more news coming up for you this morning on your Wednesday on WKYT. Well, talking your kids into going to a flower garden. <laughs>
This got a little easier. Didn't know it could <laughs> right. be difficult. <laughs> a closer look at this impressive Lego display after weather. Yeah, and we're looking at that isolated snow showers in the northern zones. You can see it's not much whatsoever, but it's a quick hitter, okay? We're going to talk about that, and I'll show you when we finally move all that on out and bring in the really nice temperatures coming up. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Looking at those isolated snow showers, just, there's three or four snow showers northbound, and they're just kind of hanging out up there, and, and they're moving eastbound, but really not much to them, but it's just enough to put a light coating there on the roads. Keep that in mind as you're traveling northbound, especially as you work your way up toward, say, Mason County. Just got a report from Corky McCord there off Twitter saying that they had a quick coating there on the roads. That's right at the interchange of 68 in the AA Highway. So keep in mind, you're traveling there. That's where you're going to be rolling into some of those snow showers coming out of Robertson County, too. Now Flemingsburg uh, getting some of this as well. You go across Highway 10 all the way to Vanceburg, and that's where you're starting to see that snow pick up steam. So just keep in mind, if you're traveling in the far northern half of Kentucky, especially along the river, that's where you're going to be seeing some of these snow showers. And another little batch is going to be rolling on through very shortly. Falmouth now, you're starting to pick that up across Highway 27. And then roll back towards, say, Brooksville. Augusta, you're next in line here in just about 15 to 20 minutes as another batch comes rolling on through. Maysville heads up again because here comes another little batch. It's going to be rolling on through. None of this is, is heavy snow. None of this is going to really cause many issues. Just know a quick little coating there on the roads, which is a headache in itself. This is the 10th consecutive day that we have actually picked up snow somewhere in the viewing area. Visibility, and that doesn't mean for everybody, somewhere in the viewing area. Visibility issues, yeah, they're pretty widespread across the bluegrass. You work your way westbound and southbound. You're getting some patchy fog here and there. 27 is going to be pretty nasty, especially as you get over toward Lake Cumberland. And then as you work your way over toward east and southeastern Kentucky, haven't heard of any issues and not seeing that on the airport either. So you guys are kind of lucking out on that one. Temperatures are there in the 30s, around 32 degrees. I mean, some spots could have a few icy patches here and there. Uh, but for the most part, the roadways look pretty good. It's just that fog. There's 75 in Athens, Boonesboro. Things are looking good up 75 all the way to the southern split of 64. Then you get into Russell Cave Road. Not hearing of any issues early this morning. Here's your next few days. Yeah, with those flurries, a couple of flakes far north. Uh, this is not widespread, but it's just enough just to isolate a little batch moving on through. So it doesn't cover a large real estate, uh, but still, you're, you're going to be seeing a couple of headaches northbound. Above 32 degrees, that's what we need. Keep melting the snow away. And if it doesn't do it today, trust me, the next few days it will do it. We're talking 40s and 50s Thursday, Friday, maybe even 60s on Friday into your weekend. Your weekend for sure, we're going to hit the 60s, especially Saturday at 64 degrees. Pretty phenomenal. And only a small rain chance there for the weekend. We could have four consecutive days where most of us stay dry and well, well above average. Speaking above average, four out of the 47 days so far this year, we've been above 60 degrees. We're going to add to that Friday, Saturday, and on Sunday. Check out your seven day forecast 38 degrees. That flurry chance, a couple of flakes in the northern zones. That's our only issue this morning with there on the roads. Well, you got to remember some of that fog too, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's something to really focus in on. Should I even talk about Monday and Tuesday of next week? No. Let's no. just leave it out. Let's, just, yeah. <laughs> Let's leave it out, man. All right. Yeah. Let's focus on the good weather coming, the four yeah. consecutive days of Just it. Uh, other things coming early yeah. next week. We of see course. it. Mm -hmm. All right, Micah, thank you. It is uh, coming up on 647. Well, life size Lego sculptures have made their way to the grounds of the South Coast Botanic Garden in Palos Verdes, California. We show you here uh, spread around the garden's 87 acres are a rose, a hummingbird, a fox, and a rabbit, as well as bison. Now, those are just some of the giant plastic sculptures that can be seen in the Temporary Nature uh, Connects exhibit. It officially opens to the public, by the way, this week. So if you happen to be out in Palos Verdes, say... California. <laughs> Looks like they're having a little better weather out that way, huh? <laughs> yeah. Look at that big so. butterfly there. It's beautiful. It is. 647 now on WKYT This Morning. More news. Stay with us. Coming up, Apple fights back against orders to help the FBI unlock the San Bernardino shooter's iPhone. A closer look at privacy versus security. Plus, can driverless cars make moral decisions? More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. 
Time this morning is 6.50, 10 till 7. Keep it right here on WKYT CBS This Morning. America's fastest growing morning show is coming up at 7. They'll have the latest from around the world and, of course, your eye opener just minutes away right here. We're making phone calls out of our newsroom right now after learning about a murder for hire plot in Pulaski County. Police say Jordan Nicholas was looking for someone to murder another Somerset man, but the sheriff's office says the man he found was an undercover deputy. After the two met and discussed details of the crime, police charged Nicholas with solicitation to commit murder. Take it slow on your morning commute. Dense fog is making it tough to see out there this morning. Visibility in some parts of the state is down to less than a half a mile. There are a few flights at Bluegrass Airport that have been delayed this morning, likely because of all that fog. A large group expected to gather in Frankfurt today in support of the Kentucky Competitive Workforce Act. House Bill 155 would offer discrimination protections for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender workers statewide. It is facing strong opposition from some. The Family Foundation fears the bill would be used to attack Christian businesses as well as Christian schools and adoption agencies. Apple says it will fight a judge's order to help the FBI access information stored in an iPhone that belonged to one of the San Bernardino, California shooters. The magistrate judge rule that Apple must supply the FBI with specialized software that can help them hack into the encrypted iPhone belonging to Saeed Farouk along with his wife who killed 14 people back in December. Donald Trump is fending off a direct attack from President Obama. Yesterday, the president said he thinks Americans will make a what he calls sensible choice and not elect Trump, something the billionaire candidate has labeled as a compliment. The latest polls show Trump and Democrat Hillary Clinton leading by double digits in the Palmetto State. Yesterday, the president also vowed to nominate someone to replace the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Many Republicans have argued that that should be left up to the next president to fill that open seat. Scalia, who passed away over the weekend, will lie in repose at the Supreme Court Friday ahead of his funeral on Saturday. A German short-haired pointer has been crowned top dog at the 140th Westminster Dog Show. Jamie Yukas is at the event in New York City, and she takes us backstage. Best in show dog tonight in 2016 is the German short-haired pointer. A three-year-old German short-haired pointer named CJ is Westminster Kennel Club's best in show. His breeder, owner, and handler says CJ is an old soul. I mean, he's a serious show dog. When we get in there, he's like all business. When we go home, he's a pet. Head judge Dr. Richard Mean explained why he singled out CJ. Alert, bright, paying attention. The competition started with nearly 3,000 canines from 199 breeds. Only the seven top dogs made it to the finals. Lucy, Panda, Annabelle, Rumor, CJ, Bogey, and Charlie all bounded onto the green carpet at Madison Square Garden Tuesday night. Seven new breeds were added to the competition this year, all of them meeting, greeting, and primping about a mile and a half from the arena. Most of the competitors then arrived by bus to adoring fans. I just think they're super adorable and just want to look at all of them all the time. CJ will now embark on a whirlwind media tour. Jamie Yukas, CBS News, New York. I like Charlie the Sky Terrier. That's my favorite. CJ's grandmother won Best in Show in 2005. Valerie Nunes Atkinson is the first breeder, owner, handler to win in more than 30 years. Some really cute pups out there, right? Absolutely. Some beautiful dogs, and uh, they had a great time, it looks like. 6.54 is our time on WKYT.com right now. That considerable fog out there this morning uh, is uh, going to hang on into the morning hours. Better weather is coming in, so we're keeping you updated on that. But you can see the situation outside right now, and we're keeping an eye on things out at Bluegrass Airport. There are three delayed flights this morning with that thick ground fog. Two flights to Atlanta being held back, one to Philadelphia is also delayed. We still have dozens of closings and delays as many areas continue to deal with the aftermath of all that heavy snow and rain, some flooding and rock slides among the issues across Kentucky. Some Lexington firefighters are going to get the chance to hit the court at Rupp Arena in front of the halftime crowd at tomorrow's Kentucky-Tennessee game. They'll be raising awareness about fellow firefighter Matt Logsdon, who is in Chicago right now undergoing cancer treatments. Nike is even making some special jerseys for the firefighters. On Kentucky.com, 
Kentucky.com, the Bevan administration says Connect has cost Kentucky $330 million, and it says Medicaid costs have jumped 20%, which they say is not sustainable. As you know, former Governor Steve Beshear created Connect and expanded Medicaid, and he defends both of those moves as being very important. CBS This Morning is coming up at 7 with your eye opener, and there they are at the broadcast center getting ready to go in just a few minutes from right now. We have a live camera where we can peek in as they set up for everything. And during CBS This Morning, we'll have local news, weather, and traffic updates as well. Hey, join us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and for the latest, WKYT.com. And check out Micah's Twitter this morning. I've also retweeted. Uh, we did some jumping jacks this morning, by the way, to get things going. But uh, nine straight days of snow. <laughs> you got to do whatever you can, man, you to got get it. through. Rebecca well, declined, yeah. understandably, understandably. At, this, at this point. Yeah, right. I feel like I declined the zip line at <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. All right. First alert defender, live radar network. Here is your look. Everything looks good except about 10% of our viewing area. And that's far, far northern Kentucky. Most of us dealing with the fog, but in the far north, Falmouth, Brooksville, you're next in line. Another shot for you guys. Maysville, another 30 minutes for another shot there. And, uh, yeah, you can see that rolling through Fleming County and also Lewis County. These are little bitty snow showers, but they could put down a quick coating. Plus All right. Rates. Nobody is more up to date than you to start your day because you were here on WKYT. Have a great day.